Hi, this is Ms. Faulkner, and today we're going to discuss how energy flows in ecosystems. We're going to be looking at the following key concepts. We're going to take a look at how life in an ecosystem requires a source of energy. We're going to look at food chains and food webs as um, models of how energy flows in an ecosystem. We're also going to take a look at how when energy does move through an ecosystem, only 10% of that energy is transferred from one trophic level to the next. So. Here we go. This diagram um, summarizes the flow of energy in an ecosystem. All living systems require an input of energy in order to function. Um, the main source of energy for life on Earth is the sun. Energy from the sun is captured by autotrophs or producers, right here, autotrophs or producers. Um, which use photosynthesis to convert the sun's energy into sugar or food. Um, the energy found in autotrophs is then transferred to heterotrophs, which get their energy by consuming living or once living things. Both autotrophs and heterotrophs carry out cellular respiration, which th what this is showing right here. So only a portion of their energy um, that they either produce in the case of autotrophs or consume in the case of heterotrophs um, is actually passed on to the next trophic level. Um, the majority of it is lost as heat. Energy flows through an ecosystem in one direction. That's key here. Um, so energy is flowing in one direction from the sun, which is our main source of energy for life on Earth, to our autotrophs and then on to our heterotrophs. Uh, our autotrophs, our producers, are organisms that get their energy from non-living resources and can use those non-living resources in order to make their own food. Um, autotrophs can either use photosynthesis, uh, and in photosynthesis, um, sunlight is used um, to um, make their own food or they can use chemosynthesis in which inorganic chemical compounds like sulfur are used in order to help organisms make their own food. Um, the energy from our autotrophs, our producers, are then passed on to our consumers or heterotrophs and those are organisms that get their energy by eating other living things or once living things. Now there are different types of consumers um, herbivores eat only plants, so things like rabbits or deer, for example. Carnivores eat only animals, so things like a hawk or maybe a, a lion. Um, an omnivore is something that eats both plants and animals, so an example would be a bear, which eats both um, maybe berries or nuts or seeds that it might find, but it also might eat fish as well. Uh, humans are also an example of an omnivore. So you might have last night ate for dinner, you know, a steak, maybe with salad. So you've eaten both plants and animals. A detritivore is something that eats dead or decaying matter. Um, so think of things like earthworms or millipedes. Um, the type of bugs that you might find on the fl forest floor. Um, a decomposer is responsible for recycling nutrients back into the ecosystem. So organisms that do this are things like fungi, um, but also bacteria. Bacteria are excellent decomposers and excellent at recycling uh, material back into the ecosystem. Food chains are a simple model that shows the flow of energy in an ecosystem. Again, each link in the food chain is known as a trophic level, and a trophic level um, are really the feeding relationships um, in a food chain. Um, again, the sun is the primary source of energy for life on Earth. Our producer is grass, so that would be our first trophic level. The grasshopper would be the second trophic level. 
um, the shrew would be the third trophic level and the owl would be the fourth trophic level. As energy flows through a food chain, um, there is um, a decrease in energy, but also energy flows from the lowest trophic level, the producer, onto the highest trophic level, which is um, the tertiary consumer in this case. Let's take a closer look at trophic levels. So um, each trophic level depends on the level below it for energy. So our producers are going to be our first trophic level. They are always going to be our first trophic level. Our second trophic level are going to be our herbivores, and those are always going to be our second trophic level, our herbivores, because they eat plants. Um, our third trophic level and our fourth trophic level um, are going to be carnivores. Um, omnivores can either be found at the second, third, or fourth trophic level depending on the food chain that you are looking at. A food web, um, as compared to a food chain, is a more complex um, representation of the feeding relationships and the flow of energy in an ecosystem. It's a more accurate view of the feeding relationships um, and the flow of energy in an ecosystem because a food chain, if we take a look back here, a food chain, you're noticing only one, two, three, four, possibly five organisms, but there's not usually just five organisms in an ecosystem. You usually have a lot more organisms in the ecosystem. You're going to have a variety of different organisms eating each other. So a food web shows all of the feeding relationships and the ways energy can flow in an ecosystem. So again, it's a more accurate view of um, the flow of energy in an ecosystem. The rule of 10 refers to the amount of energy that is transferred from one trophic level to the next. Now, um, so as you move up each trophic level, 90% um, of that energy is lost as heat as a result of you know, your cells carrying out their normal cellular functions. Um, but only 10% of the energy is available to the next trophic level. So on a test or a quiz, you will be asked to calculate how much energy is available at each trophic level given a specific amount of energy um, to start with or a specific amount of energy either at the um, second, third, or possibly fourth trophic level. Um, let's take a closer look at the rule of 10. Here's an example um, taking a look at um, energy. Um, here we have our primary producers, so they're going to hold the, um, the maximum amount of energy in an ecosystem. Here we're looking at 10,000 joules of energy. Um, in order to figure out how much energy is available at the next trophic level, you are going to um, figure out 10% of 10,000. Now, in order to do that, um, what you can do is... If you write out the number 10,000, and we know the decimal point for 10,000 is found at the end of the number. If you um, take that decimal point and move, move it over to the left one, okay? then um, you will find that you have one, two, three zeros and a one. So that gives us 1,000. And 1,000 is 10% of 10,000. And that is the energy available at the um, second trophic level. Um, we can do the same thing with 1,000. If we find 10% of 1,000, we take that decimal point and move it over to the one. Um, we now have 100 joules of energy available at the third trophic level. Um, and in order to find out um, how many joules of energy are available at the fourth trophic level, you again take that decimal point, move it over to the left one, and we see that we have 10 joules of energy available at the fourth trophic level, which is how uh, 
um, this diagram or how the makers of this diagram were actually able to calculate each of those numbers. In summary, um, the sun is the main source of energy for life on Earth. Um, you should know that energy flows in one direction from the sun to autotrophs and then to heterotrophs. And energy decreases as you move from one trophic level to the next. So only 10% of the energy is passed from one trophic level to the next. And again, 90% of that energy is lost as heat. Thanks for watching.